Hello, everyone. Mm, hi. Hi, it's Catania. I have, I believe I have Ben Harper on the line. You do. Okay. Okay, thank you, Daniel. So we'll move on to number three, Jason Curtis Thanks, from Pulse. Hi, Ben. Hello. Good to speak to you. Um, interesting, I mean, obviously around this record being recorded so soon after coming off off the off the road, um, you arguably have done some of your best work live, I think, uh, between your DVDs and uh, obviously the live album um, that you've done. Um, is that where you do your best work, in your opinion? It's tough to say, because a song like Better Way off both sides of the gun, or a song like Walk Away off Welcome to the Cool World, or a song like Younger Than Today off of Lifeline, I don't know if those songs are better live. I think some song, songs translate better live, some are just fine in the studio. Um, I just think there's an intensity to any live show that there are different art forms live and recording in the studio, and I, in my opinion, they're not to be compared. Thank you. Okay, so Leslie, are you on? I'm here. Okay, Leslie, it's your turn, number four. Hi, Ben. Someone has some bad uh, noise happening, though. Is that my I think so. No, I don't. Hello. No, I've never done that in my life. <laughs> Hello, Ben, can you hear me now? I can hear you real good now. Yes, thank you. Uh, ben, thinking about the influences and, and where you're coming from with the music and now looking forward, what do you think is the mission that you want to accomplish with, with your music, basically? Well, you know, it, it's not... Uh, mission is a big word, and it means so many different things to different people. I can't say that it started out as a mission or a crusade. It, yeah. it, I think in its most sincere form is a creative, uh, is a creative endeavor. You know, and I've, I've always followed that, followed uh, my, my creative instincts as to where they'll take me. And um, if there is a mission, though, I would have to say it's to continue on this path and, and still write the songs that I have, that I know are out there at even a higher level than any creative place I've, I've ever been, but just haven't arrived at yet. I'm, really, I'm truly trying. It's, it's a constant uh, pursuit of arriving at a, at a creative um, at a creative level that you know you can't surpass. And I know I can continue to surpass the levels, the, the standards and levels I set for myself creatively. So I, it's just continuing to reach to better myself in, in that in that pursuit. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, we'll move on to Vicki from New Zealand. Hello. Hi, Vicki. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty good. Thank you very much for your time. It's, it's going pretty early there, there, isn't it? So? Pretty early there, isn't it? Uh, it's not too bad. It's about, um, just a time. It's about half past nine, I think, for you. So. Oh, okay. All right. It's that's early for a rock and roller like me. Oh, is it? Well, I've got um, twins, so I was up pretty early right. this morning. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. It's been a good opportunity to talk to you. Um, now, I'm quite curious about uh, the way you recorded Lifeline. It's quite a... Um, it's not quite a sort of full-on listen to try and enjoy it in seven days. How did, how did that come about, or why did you decide to do it that way, I guess? Well, because I tried to do it in six and needed an extra day. <laughs> okay. To be honest. Okay, really? Yeah, and I knew that I couldn't, you know, different, a lot of how music comes to life is through the urgency and necessity of um, what you're dealing with time-wise and uh, musicianship-wise. And I knew if I sort of, you know, walked in with my, you know, double latte from Starbucks, walked into the studio and put my feet up and, you know, flipped on the Pro Tools, I just knew this record wouldn't sound or feel the same. Okay, uh, I think it'd be quite a brave thing to do, to, you know, turn off the old auto tuner. People would be quite yeah. scared of doing that, so. Yeah, well, that's okay. never, that's never, an auto-tune has never seen a Ben Harper session, and never I, I, will. I know, I <laughs> know, I'm just saying. But just, just for clarity's sake, but I know what you're saying, and, and it was, we did do it old school on 16-track analog. We used 15 tracks for the first couple of days, because one of the tracks was broken. And look, I have nothing against Pro Tools. There's some kid in his bedroom right now who's going to change the future and history of rock and roll on Pro Tools, so it's a great medium. But I just do again, you've got to serve each song on each record, and in the name of serving the song, I knew that uh, uh, 
a limited amount of time and uh, a vintage style of recording was going to suit these songs the strongest. Okay. Like, like, in the, I particularly enjoy uh, the song Paris Sunrise number seven. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, I think it's an amazingly executed song, especially considering where you recorded it. So um, I'm, I'm just sort of wondering what it's about, really. In order to make this record in seven days, we had to work from about 12 noon to about five or six in the morning. Okay. So over the course of seven days, walking out of the studio at between five and seven a.m., we managed to see seven sunrises in a row. Oh, nice. That's where the number seven came from. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Vicky. So we'll move on to number six, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Yeah. Hi, Shannon. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, um, this is the first time um, the band and some criminals has uh, collaborated with you on writing an album. Um, I'm just wondering, first of all, how the band felt about getting a chance to write with you, and uh, were they shocked to be able to do so? Um, I, well, the first part being, they felt, I think they were, they were very, much, uh, very much into it, very excited by the prospect, and I think part of what brought out the best of this record as well, the collaborative effort in the writing and recording. And were they shocked? I don't, I mean, I've written with different members of the Innocent Criminals one-on-one, -on -one, but I had never, we had never collaborated in mass as a group like that before. And I don't think they were shocked as much as uh, motivated and, and inspired. Right, and, and to believe that... Um... I tell you, if they were like, oh, finally, this, this you know narcissist is going to sort of let us into his world. If it were like that, I'd tell you. I, have, I make no bones about being a narcissist or completely absorbed by my own creative. It's very isolated, very introverted, uh, and, and I wouldn't kid you about that. But I don't think they were shocked. I honestly think that they were uh, just excited about it. Well, well, given that you're saying that you know, usually write in such an introverted style, was it, was it a shock to your system? Yeah, you know what? Good point. If anybody was shocked, it was me. Because, again, I had never opened up quite that wide creatively and brought that many people into my process of, of bringing music to life uh, in the creative phase. And, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a shock the first few days, uh, sort of bouncing things off multiple and numerous opinions to get to the best, uh, best answer. Uh, it, 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 uh, now I realize why democracy doesn't always work. Is it, is it something you'll do again, then, to be so collaborative? Come again? Um, given that it was a bit of a shock to you, do you think you'll be able to do it again? Do you think, do yeah, you I, want I, to I do would love again? to do it again. I'd, I'd love to do it again with this group of guys. I truly would, because of, the, do, because of what we got, how we were able to get it in such a concentrated amount of time. I mean, yeah. I have never been in such an intensely uh, heated and creative environment. I've never set a deadline like this. My first record was made in seven, eight days, and it was only because that's all the money we had. So this was an, exer this is a, this was an exercise in, in restraint on so many levels because I could have spent more money and could have spent more time and refused to set a strict deadline. And not only that, I mean, it's one thing when you're 23 years old, that's your first record, you've got your list of songs that you've been working on all your life. It's another thing, again, working with the, as a collective, um, everyone having an equal say in the matter. And from doing that, I, I, I feel an exponent creative growth that I look forward to investing in again. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, so we'll move on to Scott, number seven. Ben, how are you doing? Hey, Scott. What's going on? Not a lot, mate. Not a lot. Um, I just sort of wanted to ask... Um, why you chose to do all this in Paris, and did you sort of was it was it um, why why did you decide to do this so soon, sort of after both sides of the gun? Was that a decision that you've been contemplating for a while, or yeah? Why in Paris is because Paris has the, has a I mean it's thick there, man. The creative the creative uh, energy there is thick. You can cut it with a knife. And it's real. You go there, you step off the plane, you step into town, and it's on. So creatively, there was no denying that Paris was the right place. 
Um, and, and it's alive right now. Paris creatively is on fire at the moment. It's a, it's a young culture. It's a creative culture, giving culture creatively. Look, I don't over-idealize anywhere in the world. Everywhere has its up, down, north, south, east, west, good, bad, and, and indifferent, uh, as does Paris. But creatively, it, 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 uh, I, always wanted, I, it, I had always wanted to uh, bring that, I had always wanted to bring a part of Paris into, the, into making music and, and sort of leave a piece of the music I make there for, 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 uh, for, all, for time, you know, all time's sake, hopefully. But that's sort of over, over exaggerating my point a bit. But that's at its best that could happen. And then, uh, what was the second part of the question, man? I got absorbed in my own thought there. Yeah, obviously, um, you released this album pretty quickly after both sides of the gun. Um, was that something that was planned, or? Oh yeah, no, no, it, it was super spontaneous. It was super. Sp- as of are all my records. I mean, I've I've pretty much gone back to back, touring, touring to recording, touring to recording for the last 12, 13 years now. So that's kind of, that's just what I do. That's kind of part of my process. I come off the road and pretty much never like this. Never, you're on stage one day, in the studio the next. This was the first time I'd, I usually take some kind of break. But I just couldn't. The band was playing too good. And the material was feeling too good to just let it sit. So I was really just sort of urged along by the cre- by the material. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent, thank you, Scott. Okay, so we'll move back to number one. If Craig, are you on the line? I'm back on. Okay, great. So you can ask a question, Ben. Hey, Craig. Hey, Ben. Where are you? Uh, Mom and Kat's on. How are you doing, Ben? Oh, man, very good. I'd like to get there sometime, someday. Uh, good, I'm actually um, signing on um, from a surf background. I want to ask a couple of surf questions, if that's cool with you. Please. Um, you said in the past, Ben, that surfing has influenced your songwriting and are there any tracks from the new album that are influenced by surfing at all? Or the surfing lifestyle at all? Uh, yeah, Younger Than Today is influenced by surf and surf culture in that surfing makes you feel permanently young and somewhat invincible. Okay. I um, think if you put that song to a surf track or a surf background visually, uh, it'll make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, and... Um, Surfers dig your music. For some reason, surfers really relate to, to your music and your style. Um, do, you, do you have any idea why that is? You know, I, I can't say. I just, I'm just glad they do, because in the last seven years or so, I've, I've become a surfer myself, and uh, it's something I love to do. It's something I've become very passionate about. I, I'm actually equally, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a skater. I grew up skateboarding, so that's my background. And I never thought I'd be as passionate about uh, anything else as I am skateboarding, and surfing definitely right up there with it now. Um, so I, it, it's hard to say directly why and how, why and how it, it's connected so strong, but I'm just super thankful that it did. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Okay, we're going to number two, Daniel, again. Hi there. Hey, Daniel, again, what's happening? <laughs> Nothing much. Hmm. Okay. Where are you at? So what, my, my, um, I'm in the big bad city of Joburg. Okay, all right. Johannesburg. All right. Um, yeah, it's cool here. Yeah, it's a great place. It, it, everyone goes on about Cape Town, but Joburg's cool too. We don't get enough respect. I'd like to get there. I'd like to get to Cape Town and, and Johannesburg and, and Soweto. And I'd like to, I'd, it'd be a dream come true to be able to get there. Mm, Soweto is sort of an outside of the world. So my next question is, um, you've always had this, uh, this element of political consciousness in, in some of your music. Um, on the one hand, a lot of your stuff is really personal, but then you've got your songs like Oppression and Like a King, Better Way, um, stuff like that. And to what extent do you think that sort of music is used now as an agent of change? Because your uh, protest music has taken a back seat. And is there any of this element on the new album? And, uh, and when does one decide uh, to make things personal and is it a conscious decision when you make things political? Okay, wait a minute now, because there's about three questions in there, all of them are really good. So let's start with the first part of the first question. Hmm, which I suppose would be, um, to what extent do you think that protest music is needed now in today's climate? Oh man, we could go on for a long, long time about that. I mean, because music is, uh, music is just one more opportunity for a huge cultural, social, 
spiritual and political shift that uh, I can only hope on our best day, and on my best day, I could be a small part of. Mm. And um, and on the new album, to, to what extent is, is, is that uh, element present compared to the first? Well, it's not for me to define. I can't go through each word or each lyric of each song and say this song means this, this song means that, this song means the other. Only because it, it's not that's not my role as a musician to define what songs are of what social, political value and to whom they're of that value. That's that's asking that's an unfair proposition of anyone creative. Uh, but I but I will say uh, certain records are more that than other records. Certain records are going to be more of a push from different directions, and it has to be that. You always have to be taking different perspectives, at least for me. If I came out and sang about the same thing on every song on every record, there'd be no element of, of uh, urgency to it because it would be the same thing as I sang about last time. So I'm always trying to sing about... The more you sing about different things, the more it puts weight on those other stances and statements you've made on other songs. In other words... Ballads put more strength and weight on, say, a song of like, uh, let me give you, uh, all right, for example, a song like Put It On Me on Lifeline. It's an up, jump, dance, you know, just sort of jump around the house on Sunday type of a song. Where a song like um, Black Rain, that's coming from a different place, but they both give each other their strength because they counterbalance each other, and they sort of fill it out, my perspective anyway. That's great. And I suppose the last part of the question is just, uh, do you think that it's accurate to say that uh, that music which does address sort of politics and change and, and the state of the world has taken a back seat now and that those people who are doing it now seem, seem fewer? And if that is the case, why do you think that it is? In other words, why, why is music with social and political commentary not of the same value as it was in the 60s kind of thing? Is that, is that what we're talking about here? I don't, you know, the times define music as much as music defines the times. But I, I, I don't, you know, for me, it's not so much about, well, I want this song to change the world, or I, I want this song to be political. It's not about that. For me, music is a way for me to stand up for my fucking self because I don't feel that there's a reflection in politics of anyone standing up for me in a situation or in the political arena. So I, so music is my way of standing up for myself and saying, you know what, that's not right. This is the way I, this is where I'm at with it. That's a great answer. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, so we'll move on to Jason, number three. Uh, ben, <clears throat> I think we could. Uh, I think you should run for Congress. <laughs> yeah, you know what, man? They couldn't handle me. <laughs> they don't. They're not ready to hear what I have to say. They're not ready to get that on us. And what frustrates me is when you really dig in to, to, to like when you go into the underbelly. You know, um, the SAIC. You know, when you start really investigating who's running what, how, and why, then you recognize that it's. <laughs> It's the axis of evil. You can't even, you, the minute you sort of peel back one layer, there's another layer that's even worse. It's like a video game that you can't win. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, you guys, seriously. When you get to the heart, so, countries are run, managed, mismanaged, destroyed. Democracy will die in the hand of those, democracy will die in the hand of being misdefined. Currently, democracy is defined by all that the public does not know. Mm, Democracy is defined by all. It's, politics is running a large group of people on what you are not supposed to know about. Mm. That's what makes me most frustrated. I mean, people. I think people are frustrated with music that discusses change because change isn't happening fast enough. Mm. I mean, by now we should be far more socially advanced. By now, situations like New Orleans shouldn't be happening in America and still have it defined as a democracy. But then how, how does someone like you, um, you know, I mean, it, I think the biggest frustration is that you can, you can fill halls, you know, all over the world and, and, and you, can, uh, you can have
have people hear what you have to say, but it, like you, like you say, your own frustration is that uh, to, to to try and uh, you know for that shift to, to come, uh, it, it must be hugely frustrating that you can influence a room of people, but you can't uh, you can't change the world. My God, what could be more frustrating? I think that's why certain musicians who have been on the political bench don't really. They, they don't point it so much because there's a risk involved. There's a, there's a built-in risk in voicing opinions and perspectives of the political, social nature in modern-day society. If that's coming for you with the hammer and the nails. No, great. Um, my, my question, just very quickly, was um, it's been 15 years um, since your debut. Uh, do, do you feel like a bit of a veteran these days? I, that's such a good question because that is posed to me relatively consistently, and I don't, only because I still feel so new to this. I still feel like music is informing me in a much deeper way than it ever has. And the musicians I admire the most have been in it. Have been in it. I mean, I've got eight or nine records out there, but the people I admire the most and would like to pattern my musical ventures after, we've all got 20 and 30 records out. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a really good start, but it's only that. Great. Thank you. Jason, you have hey, a final question for Ben? No problem. Um, ben, you've been doing this long enough to, I suppose, to know uh, w where you are uh, creatively, I suppose. But w would you say that, uh, I mean, if you, if you look back over your career, are you, um, have you peaked creatively, do you think? Or is that, are, you, are you still on that, on that road up? I so haven't peaked creatively that I'm not even I'm not even humoring <laughs> the potential of even turning my neck sideways to look back. Mm. That's comforting as a fan. Thank you for saying so. And the reason I know that is because the feeling, the feeling that I have in my heart that has brought these records out, out to date is stronger now than it ever has been. And it's that feeling that brought those records to life. And this feeling that I have has never let me down. And I don't think it plans on doing that anytime soon. And I can only say that because I know what I'm writing on a daily basis. And it's, it's taken me in directions that I never thought I could go in. Thank you.